In this presentation, a non-reducible comminuted fracture of the femur will be stabilized with an intramedullary pin and a 12-hole 3.5 LCDCP used as a bridging plate. The objectives are to show the indications for the use of an intramedullary pin and a bridging plate, the instruments and implants needed, the patient position and approach, and the alignment and stabilization of the comminuted fracture. These preoperative radiographs of the model show the extent of the comminuted fracture of the femoral shaft. As the proximal and distal segments are not affected, an intramedullary pin can be used to restore axial alignment and the original length of the bone. The plate will protect the fracture from axial compression as well as the rotational and bending forces. The intramedullary pin provides additional resistance to these bending forces. The instruments needed are, from left to right, the large pointed reduction forceps, two large toothed reduction forceps, the gold 2.5 millimeter drill bit, the 3.5 2.5 double drill guide, the 3.5 LCDCP drill guide, or the 3.5 universal drill guide, the gold 3.5 mm tap with T-handle, the depth gauge, the screwdriver with holding sleeve, and the bending pliers. Also needed are the compact air drive or a similar device, the chuck and key, and two 4.5 mm diameter Steinmann pins used for the intramedullary pinning. An intact femur is used in this exercise in order to judge both the plate position against the landmarks and how much contouring is required. In a clinical case, a radiograph of the uninjured leg would be used. The patient is positioned in lateral recumbency on the operating table with the affected limb uppermost to allow a lateral approach to the femur. This is the bone model of the comminuted fracture of the femur. The femoral head is secured in the vise with the lateral surface towards the surgeon. The pointed reduction forceps is applied to the distal end of the femur in order to control the movements of the distal segment. A 4.5 mm intramedullary pin is inserted into the chuck and secured with the key. In a clinical case, when an intramedullary pin is used in combination with the plate, the diameter of the pin should be approximately 40% of the diameter of the medullary cavity in the region of the femoral isthmus. The intramedullary pin is inserted in a normal grade fashion. The landmark is the greater trochanter. The tip of the intramedullary pin is positioned on the proximal part of the trochanter and slid medially into the trochanteric fossa. This is the point of entry. To avoid slippage, the tip of the pin is first seated into the metaphysial bone in a cranial direction. Once the tip starts penetrating the bone, the pin is directed towards the patellar region and driven distally. The pin crosses the comminuted area and engages the distal segment. There will be an increased resistance when the pin hits the distal metaphysial region and the bone will be distracted to restore the normal length. To check the depth of penetration, another pin of the same length is held alongside the visible portion of the pin that protrudes from the bone. The end of the pin should lie at the level of the proximal extent of the trochlear sulcus and must not penetrate the articular surface. The spatial alignment of the landmarks is checked to assess the axial length and the rotational alignment of the joints above and below the fracture. The landmarks are the greater trochanter, the femoral neck, the femoral condyles, and the linea aspera, which starts at the caudal lateral aspect of the femur.
A 12-hole 3.5 LC DCP is contoured to the lateral surface of an intact femur. In a clinical case, a radiograph of the uninjured leg would be used. The contoured plate is secured with the toothed reduction forceps to the proximal and distal segments of the bone. Intraoperatively, the alignment of the leg should be checked to ensure that 45 degrees of internal rotation and 90 degrees of external rotation are possible. Incorrect limb alignment will not preserve the normal angle of antiversion of the femoral neck relative to the diaphyseal axis. The rotational alignment can still be adjusted. A screw with a buttress function will now be inserted into the most proximal plate hole. Either the 3.5 LCDCP drill guide on the left or the 3.5 universal drill guide on the right can be used. When the universal drill guide is selected, it should be placed at the end of the plate hole closest to the fracture and pressed down. This will place a screw hole in the buttress position. If the green neutral LCDCP drill guide is chosen, it is placed in the plate hole with the arrow pointing away from the fracture. The gold 2.5 mm drill bit is used to drill a hole through both cortices, taking care to avoid the intramedullary pin. The depth is measured. The thread is cut in the bone with the gold 3.5 mm tap through the double drill guide. The appropriate length 3.5 mm cortex screw is inserted bicortically. The same procedure is followed at the second distal plate hole. The arrow on the drill guide must point away from the fracture. Another buttress screw is inserted at the proximal end of the plate. If the tip of the drill comes into contact with the intramedullary pin, a monocortical screw can be used instead of a bicortical screw. However, there should be a minimum of six cortices engaged in each major bone segment. The forceps is now removed. A third proximal screw is now inserted in the same manner. The procedure is repeated at the distal end of the plate. The plate holes over the comminuted area are left empty. In the clinic, cancellous bone autograft may be added to the comminuted area. The post-operative radiographs of the bone model show the restored length and the spatial alignment. The position of the intramedullary pin and the bicortical screws is clearly visible. In the clinic, the excess intramedullary pin is cut off. The intramedullary pin and plate combination shown in this presentation is particularly effective for bridging large comminuted fractures because of the synergistic mechanical properties. The intramedullary pin is used for fracture reduction and to restore normal length and axial alignment of the bone. This technique is especially recommended for indirect fracture reduction and an open but do not touch approach in comminuted fracture repair.